This evening by Mr. Brian Henderson with Abundant Life Tabernacle. We appreciate you being here with us. Uh, after that, please remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance to be led by Alderman Payne. Shall we pray? Our great and almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, who rules over all creation, it's in your magnificent, all-powerful name, that name of Jesus that we pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In this era of chaos and point in time, gratitude overflows our hearts because you've allowed us to live in this great city. We thank you for your blessings, resources, and opportunity you've given us to bless you from whom riches and honor come. God, it's all in your hand. Help us to understand that so that we can be faithful to you. In a time when authority is being flaunted and there's rebellion against higher powers, help us to recall and make known that the powers that be are ordained of God. And whosoever therefore resisteth that power resisteth God. We invoke your blessings upon and your presence to be with these honorable officials of South Haven. Blessings today and every day that they assemble. As they consider the affairs of this city, grant, O Lord, special wisdom and understanding of your will, and that we will do it. We pray a special blessing on Mayor Musselwhite and these aldermen as they endeavor to lead this great city. Hear this prayer, God, that it may be answered in our time, but in your way. To the King eternal, immortal, invisible, be honor and glory and power and might in the name above every name that can be named in heaven and in earth. The name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first on the agenda this evening is approval of minutes for the May 1, 2018 meeting. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of May 1, 2018 with any additions, deletions, or corrections. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Brooks. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hayes? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Next on the agenda is our presentation of graduation cords to our Mayor's Youth Council. Uh, if everyone will come to the front, um, Christy, will you help me? at the front and uh, we'll do the presentation uh, right in front of the podium. Congratulations. Are y'all ready? Jaysha, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, that's great. Uh, come great. just step forward. <laughs> Jaysha Hodges, uh, she's been a, a member of our Mayor Youth Council since ninth grade, and she's going to attend Ole Miss this fall. Good luck to you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Emily Pearson. Emily's been a member of the Youth Council since 11th grade and will attend Mississippi State in the fall. Good luck to you. Yeah. Uh, Micah Taylor. Mike has been a member since ninth grade and will attend Alabama A&M University this fall. Good night. I mean, good luck. Good night. Good night. Good night. You'll need it. Uh, Blake Watson. Blake has been a member since 11th grade and will attend the University of Southern Mississippi this fall. Good luck to you. And then uh, South, uh, that's our DeSoto Central High School, South Haven High School, Gavin Faust. And uh, Gavin's been a member since ninth grade and has joined the National Guard and will attend the University of Memphis this fall. Good luck. Uh, Nora uh, Chismore. 
has been a member since ninth grade and will attend Middle Tennessee State University in the fall. Good luck. Tristan Parsons has been a member uh, since 11th grade and will attend the University of Southern Mississippi in the fall. Good luck to you. And Tori Jones has been a member since 11th grade and will attend Mississippi State University in the fall. Good luck to you. And I'm going to give you one. You didn't ask me, but I'm going to give you some <coughs> advice anyway. I'll, I'll joke in aside. You're at a time in your life that a lot of people in this room know what I'm talking about. Uh, you got a lot ahead of you. It's, it really is truly just beginning. There will be people in your life that are going to put labels on you, that are going to tell you, you know, give that up. You know, you're wasting time with that. You need to do this. I want you to do this. Uh, my advice to you is don't let anyone tell you what you do with your future. Uh, that's up to you. If you want it bad enough, you can achieve anything you want to achieve. And I wish you all the best of luck. agenda uh, is our resolution that I'm going to read to you in just a minute and that's uh, declaring this week May 13th through 19th as National Police Week. Whereas to recognize National Police Week 2018 and to honor the service and sacrifice of those law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty while protecting our communities and safeguarding our democracy. Now, whereas there are more than 900,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, including the dedicated members of the South Haven Police Department, and whereas there have been 58,627 assaults against law enforcement officers in 2016, resulting in approximately 16,677 injuries, and whereas since the first recorded death in 1791, more than 20,000 law enforcement officers in the United States have made the ultimate sacrifice and been killed in the line of duty, including one member of the South Haven Police Department in 1988. And whereas the names of these dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C., and whereas 360 new names of fallen heroes are being <coughs> added uh, to this memorial this spring, including 129 officers killed in 17 and 231 officers killed in previous years. And whereas the service and sacrifice of all officers killed in the line of duty will be honored during the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund's 30th annual candlelight vigil on the evening of May 13, 2018. And whereas the candlelight vigil is part of National Police Week, which takes place this year on May 13 through 19. Because May 13 falls on a Sunday, some events will take place before the official dates of Police Week 2018. And whereas May 15 today is designated as Peace Officer Memorial Day in honor of all fallen officers and their families, the United States flag should be flown at half staff, which they are in the city of South Haven today. Now, therefore, I, Darren Musselwhite, by the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of South Haven, Mississippi, hereby proclaim the week of May 13 through 19, 2018, as National Police Week in our city, and publicly salute the service of law enforcement officers in our community and in communities across the nation. Well, join me in applause for our police. <laughs> And just as an addition to that, I'm going to leave you with one final statement about that. Uh, Chief Pernell and his staff and I deal with, um, you know, recruiting officers uh, to serve our city. And I can tell you, even at the level of South Haven, we can feel it. We can feel the disrespect in recent years towards the police in our country, and it's affecting people by getting into the line of profession. And I can tell you, if uh, whatever problems you think our country has, if we don't have adequate protection from these men and women in uniform, we have serious problems. So I would just encourage you, when you hear someone that thinks it's funny you know, to disrespect our police, please stand up and be another voice for us. Mayor, if I could say one thing too. Uh, we had something happen this past weekend. We had an auto theft 
and I just want to brag on our police department for doing such an outstanding job apprehending that suspect uh, in a timely fashion. I mean, it was really quick. Outstanding law enforcement work, and we need to show them guys, you know, gratitude for what they do every day. Absolutely. They, they never know when a, a moment uh, can put their life in danger, and just like that incident, they responded extremely quickly and stopped that situation. So I appreciate you bringing that up. That was uh, outstanding, outstanding job. Okay, next on our agenda is our um, public hearing for our tax increment financing plan uh, for Silo Square in South Haven. So at this point, um, do we vote to open it up? Make a motion to close Okay, if I can get a motion now to close the public meeting, open up the hearing. I'll make that motion, Mayor. Okay, we got a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Gallagher. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. I just have a motion carries the public hearing uh, is now open. So if anyone would like to, uh, we have representatives uh, for the development in the audience that are here with us to answer questions. Um, our board and myself are also available to answer any questions. So at this point, we'll open up the floor. Anyone that wants to speak, ask a question, whatever, please come forward to the podium. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Please come forward. Any other comments on the board? Any questions from anyone? Wow, social media sure is an animal. <laughs> All that on social media, nobody's here to speak really. For the people watching, where are you? You know, you talked to me for two weeks. Where are you? Where are you? We're here waiting on you to ask questions. Where are you? I think once the numbers came out, they realized it's a good thing. It, it changed a lot of minds. I know I've had several the last couple of days that yeah. were against it. And then they said, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, it's been a good thing from day one. But um, again, like a lot of things, a lot of misinformation was stirred purposely. So I always respect someone that has a legitimate question, and then when they get the facts, they you know form an opinion or change their opinion based on those facts. Unfortunately, that doesn't go on sometimes. It's just always amazing to me that no one shows up here. You know, when they have a free chance to say whatever they want to say, ask whatever they want to say, and there's total silence. So, but anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Autumn Brooks, did you want to comment? Anybody else have a comment? So we just close the close the hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Second. Uh, motion by Alderman Hoot, second by Alderman Brooks. I'll close the public hearing and reopen the meeting. That was the question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it was implied. <laughs> hey, I'm the new guy still. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Okay, next on the, excuse me, next on the agenda. Is that not the next thing on the agenda? That's the, that's the development agreement. The, the TIF plan will come after the hearing. There'll be, two, there'll be a motion after the hearing for the development agreement. Okay, so what do we need, what are we doing now? Uh, go back one on the PDF. So I just read this, we're doing some resolution approving the adoption of information. Go to seven. Number seven. Uh, yeah, right there. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt a resolution declaring the intention of the Mayor and Board of Alder of the City of South Haven to issue tax and equipment financing bonds of said municipality in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $5 million to finance the cost of installing and constructing certain public infrastructure improvements to support Silo Square within said city in accordance with Chapter 45 of Title 21, Mississippi Code, 1972. As amended and determining that Silo Square is a project eligible for tax increment financing according to said act, and that public hearing will be uh, be conducted in connection with the tax and increment financing plan for said project and for related purposes as, as presented on this date. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, second by Alderman Flores. Is there any discussion? 
Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hoops? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, that motion carries. Now it's eight, correct? Yes, eight. Okay. Yes. Next on the agenda is resolution for the development agreement. This is Mr. Nick Manley. Just to follow up on the uh, resolution to approve the financing development agreement will be the actual document that will uh, help govern the financing portion of the uh, TIP. So that was uh, sent, it's been reviewed by um, the developer. They're in agreement as well. So tonight we need authorization for the resolution for the development agreement for the mayor to sign. The resolution will give the authorization for the mayor to sign the development agreement with um, the developer for the solid square project. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Flores, second by Alderman <coughs> Kelly. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hoots? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, that motion carries. Next on the agenda is a resolution for unmarked police vehicles. Yeah, this resolution will bring us in compliance with the Mississippi Code to uh, have a res resolution uh, which sets forth unmarked police vehicles. Um, those police vehicles being marked would hinder uh, investigation. So under the uh, Mississippi Code, in pursuant to the audit guidelines, we need to pass this resolution um, to get in compliance with the applicable code section and then have this resolution, a certified copy of the resolution, sent to the uh, state auditor's office. And uh, the chiefs put together this list for the unmarked vehicles. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt a resolution on the City of South Haven setting forth City of South Haven Police unmarked vehicles pursuant to Mississippi Code Section 25187. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Brooks. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Alderman Wheeler. Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, that motion carries. Next on the agenda is a resolution for a budget amendment. Mr. Chris Wilson. Mayor Board, this is an $80,000 amendment to the uh, tourism budget, which will be expensed after park improvements. Um, our, this is strictly the hotel motel tax, and the revenues have been coming in above estimations throughout the year. This simply raises our baseline by 80000 for the year, which you'll see if you take your chart and flip it over on the back one, you'll see the uh, what, what the new baseline does to the uh, projections, and we are still well within, um, and actually, most likely, this is still a very conservative budget estimate for the remainder of the year at 80000 I'll make that motion. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Flores, second by Alderman Gallagher. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hoots? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Here. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Next on the agenda is a resolution for tax exemption for Butler Animal Health Supply, LLC, doing business as Henry Strine Animal Health. This is a resolution for the personal and uh, uh, real property for um, Butler Animal Health Supply, LLC, to be a Henry Strine Animal Health. Um, it's been recommended by the Economic Council along with, uh, reviewed by the Economic Council for the county and the um, city. There's tonight we need authorization for the mayor to sign the resolution and provide a copy of the Mississippi Department of Revenue um, for the tax exemption uh, for the real property and personal property for other animal health. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Flores, second by Alderman Brooks. Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hoots? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Here. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, that motion carries. Next on the agenda is a resolution amending our transient vendor ordinance. Yeah, this, if you recall, this uh, ordinance was amended last year 
um, to uh, reflect that uh, transient vendors can only be in certain uh, zones, C4 zones. Uh, this will further uh, amend this ordinance. Um, and working with the clerk's office um, to require, if they have a building <coughs> or a freestanding structure, it would require a building and fire inspection to be in compliance with our building and fire codes. Um, also, require a certificate um, for those uh, certain uh, people who don't have to register through the state law that don't have a clerk certificate. And um, in addition to that, also require that uh, all transient vendors cannot or cannot be on vacant lots and must not be on the city right away. Um, and for the uh, uh, for their vending services, um, so it's, those are the main highlights of the, of the uh, amendment to the transient vendor ordinance. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, Andrew can answer questions too as well. But tonight, bring it to the board um, for you and authorization to sign the resolution and publish it before it go into effect within one month of passage. Honorable Gallagher, would you make a motion? So moved. We have a motion by Alderman Gallagher. Is there a second? Okay. A second, Alderman Kelly. Is there any discussion? So what are we implementing here again, Nick? Amendment of the transient vendor ordinance. Uh, basically requiring, if you have a, there, I think the issues become, if there's, there are certain transient vendors who have had structures, and those structures will have to comply with the building and fire code, as well as not being city right away, and also not being vacant lots, and having some registration um, from the standpoint of being able to ensure the safety of those people. Or just like we would treat any other building like that, they were just ensure, not sure the safety, but at least do our part to inspect those facilities. So. Now, what building, the commercial building and fire codes, like are they going to have sprinklers and if they all that sort of stuff? Well, it wouldn't be from it wouldn't be from the standpoint of that topic. People are going in the buildings. Um, it would be a compliant electrical code, <coughs> building code, um, making sure it's structurally sound. Yes. So when they're trucks, you're talking about. Vending trucks or something? Not the trucks. Those, are, those wouldn't be an actual, an actual building. That those are those are the, you have some, I think there's only what, one or two that are not there's one trailer. structure. But the trailers, like the trailers on wheels, those wouldn't, those aren't an actual a building. So an actual have the, there's certain requirements for them already from a standpoint of not being able to hook up to, I mean, having sanitary disposal systems. But um, for the actual building code, that would apply to a, a vehicle or a station on wheels. So, so we're talking about someone that, Actually, it builds a shed or Correct. something Correct. on a shed. someone else's property yes. to sell. That's the whole purpose other. of the change is to differentiate between a mobile a, a mobile uh, vehicle and a, and a structure. Because okay. um, there were some situations where people were using a temporary structure and then trying basically working the system to get around the ordinance, you know, dropping it on wheels, or whatever, and calling it mobile. And that's that's not the intent. The intent right. of a transient vendor ordinance is for uh, businesses that are truly transient. Yeah, they're not very transient if they're in, right. Can't move the building. Right. So all this is doing is just making it clear. You know what's a, what's a mobile? What's the difference in a vehicle and a structure? And then there was uh, that was the main. That's the main change. The other thing was just clarifying some language, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. But that's the guts of anything that's changing as far as the. The application of the ordinance that was yeah. the and you have to have the same you have the uh, disposal system you, know, you can't just hook on some electricity or electrical code. yeah but that that's electrical code issue that'd be a danger anyway yes yeah. so that's like if you have extension cord running across the parking lot things that you common sense wouldn't want to do right it's, it's you have to have some sort of a plumbing running water or something or else it is but our access to or access to it yes does that answer your question all right it did thank you don't they, if they're selling food, don't they still have to adhere to the like food inspections and stuff like that? Correct. Yes. Sir. yes. Okay, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hood? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Yes. Alderman Perez? Yes. Okay, that motion carries. Next on the agenda is a resolution for sanitation fees. This is the resolution for the unpaid sanitation fees. Um, as you notice, it is going down some, but uh, it's uh, uh, either for the lien or the car tag assessment for those who have not paid.
We have a motion of Alderman Brooks, second of Alderman Kelly. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Foods? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, that motion carries. Next on the agenda is a resolution to claim private property. Mr. Mayor, we adopt the resolution granting authority to claim private property as presented on the state. Second. We have a motion of Alderman Brooks, second of Alderman Payne. Is there any discussion among the board? Hearing none, is there uh, anyone in the audience, uh, any owners of the property that would like to speak? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hoops? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Yes. No motion carries. Okay, next on the agenda is our planning agenda. Ms. Whitney Cook. Uh, yes, tonight we have three ordinance changes that we're proposing for um, the zoning ordinance and the subdivision regulations. The first one is uh, an amendment to Title 13, Chapter 12, Section 13-12M, and this is specifically the commercial use chart. What we're proposing in this is to further uh, regulate and put some more controls on convenience stores. A lot of traffic generated by a convenience store. There's logical places for them, a lot of traffic, intersections. Uh, what we found is there is a lot, uh, there's an influx of them. Uh, they're coming into areas that maybe don't have direct access to a street or maybe just kind of in the middle of intersections but not at a point where there's a light, a controlled access part. It's very problematic for us from a congestion and traffic standpoint. What we're proposing to do is leave them in the zones that they're, at, that they're allowed in already but put them under a conditional use and have contingencies in footnote number 48, which is part of the ordinance, which states um, they're limited to sites that are on hard corners, which are your intersecting corners, um, should be at a lighted intersection and have a maximum of two per intersection. Because if you hit all four, if you hit all four corners with that traffic generation, you essentially have to have a Goodman Road wide and street. Um, so we just wanted to put some more controls on it. All of them will come in front of the Board of Aldermen for a final determination. It requires a public hearing. Right now it does not. It's a site plan application only and they can go anywhere it's commercial zoned. Um, so we just wanted to get a handle on it due to the congestion. But that is the change um, that we're presenting with this first ordinance resolution. Is there a motion to approve item one? I'll make the motion to approve item one. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Gallagher. Is there any discussion about one? You limiting them to one corner of the four or two? We're allowing for two. I mean, you would want one in, in both directional flows, um, but four is overkill. One, I think, would be almost too restrictive. But it, it could be, it's contingent on each intersection. If it's a minor intersection, we may just want one, but at least it puts the more control in our hands so we can look at the traffic circulation and the patterns and improvements that need to be done with the streets um, if we bring it in front of the board. Sure. Is this just for uh, convenience stores going forward? Nothing in the city right now will be affected. No, we won't be retrofitting. We won't be retrofitting any of them uh, right now. Obviously, they're already in their location. Um, but in the past month, I've had ten potential sites come in, uh, and like out of those ten, only about four made sense with the locations. Um, so for whatever reason, there's an influx, and we just have to get our handle on them so we don't just completely congest every major road that we've got. This wouldn't be effective until 30 days after tonight anyway. Correct. Now, everything that's in file, that's, that's filed now will stand with the existing. Okay. <clears throat> Any other discussion on item one? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Briggs? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hoops? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Alderman Flores? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, our next ordinance amendment is to Title 13, Chapter 3, Section 13 3I. And this is simply offering the public an itemized list of all of the applications and permitting processes and their cost. Uh, it's, it's adding a fee chart to the, the zoning and subdivision regulations. We don't currently have it. A lot of the departments already have it. Fire department, court had their set fees and fines in the ordinance. It's, it's clear. It's, it's for clarification. 
Um, but this is adding that into a reserve section, uh, the administrative section of the zoning ordinance. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve item number two on the plan agenda. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman <coughs> Kelly. Is there any discussion? Are all these fees the same if you just put in? Yes, they're all in our, on our permits right now. Uh, we haven't increased we haven't increased them since I've been here. Um, so these are the ones that are already set. They're in an application format, but they're not in an ordinance format. format. Um, and like the mayor and I discussed, it, it just makes it more official. Uh, and it's, a, it's easily accessible to the public. A lot of times they don't know what it is and they can look them up. So uh, in terms of formality and accessibility is what we did it for. Clarifying that anymore. Exactly. No, no adjustments to the fees whatsoever. And as Whitney stated, this is uh, one thing that I asked her to work on, you know, just to uh, make it more user friendly for the public, put everything in one place. Like everything is already there somewhere, uh, either in uh, you know a document throughout the operations or an ordinance form, but this is a way uh, to put everything in one location where it's easy to find and it's crystal clear for everybody. Correct. We were busy at the last, uh, Committee meeting. <laughs> Any other discussion on two? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hoops? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, that motion carries on two. Uh, our third ordinance amendment is to Title 12, Chapter 4, Section 12 103. This is your subdivision regulations. Uh, we reference sidewalks in both the zoning ordinance and in the subdivision regulations. Um, and as you've seen, we're trying to become as pedestrian and bicycle friendly as we can be. So the zoning ordinance amended the sidewalk requirements, which were previously ADA compliant, which required on two sides, on major roads, one side in residential, none in coves. We changed that ordinance and or changed that section in the ordinance for zoning to require it on both sides of the street unless it's a major arterial road, like Church Road, Goodman Road, obviously we don't want people walking down them, but every other street system would be required to have two sidewalks, one on each side. This ordinance amendment is to provide consistency between the subdivision regulations and the zoning ordinance because the subregs, a totally different section of our code, still goes with the ADA compliance of at least on one side. Um, so we wanted to correct it, provide the consistency with our ordinances, um, so we're putting the dual sidewalks requirement into the subdivision regulations, which will now match up with what we have in zoning. And that's it. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve item three on the planning agenda. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Gallagher, second by Alderman Brooks. Is there any discussion on three? So now both sides of sidewalk ADA compliant. Yes, they will all have the ADA compliant ramps. Uh, you still will, um, not be required to put them in coves. Um, and like I said, we have excluded them from major arterial roads, uh, which will basically be your major section line roads, your airways, your Goodman's, Church Road, and things like that. So that's just not, it's not pedestrian friendly in terms of hazard. Uh, so we don't want to enhance walkability on those, but essentially every other road in the city will be required to have a sidewalk on both sides. And we should be coming to you soon once we get uh, the ordinance prepared to do the whole complete street system, which would put the bike paths on there as well. any other discussion on three? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Briggs? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hill? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, the motion carries. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Next on our agenda is Mayor's report. I uh, just want to update the board on a few things. Uh, uh, you may, many of you may have noticed that uh, when it gets this time of year, you know, grass is growing. Uh, we made the decision this year that we would take in the right of way maintenance on our own. So now we have our crew, public works crews doing that. Um, that doesn't take away the, still the responsibilities of potholes and street repairs and all the other things that, that they've done in the past. I know a few of you sent emails to Bradley. I just want to make sure everybody understands that uh, we're a little bit behind personnel. Uh, when we made these decisions to make these changes, Along with that came uh, new personnel. Like in 2017, we added four personnel to Public Works. 
and then we came back last budget year and added another six. So in the last two budget years, we've added ten, uh, ten excuse me, ten new personnel uh, designed for these purposes. Uh, we're having trouble hiring. We've not we're not full. We're still about five short. So. Um, just asking you to bear with us. We're a little bit behind trying to do the right of ways and do all the street repairs too. Uh, but I just thought you need to know that that eventually when we get uh, when we get all ten positions filled, we should be uh, moving smoothly. Uh, until then, we're uh, we are you know our guys are working their working their tail off. So if y'all will just um, you know be patient with us there until we get those uh, hired. We are working on that. Uh, we feel like we we're going to be able to make those hires in the um, in the next thirty days, hopefully. So. Um, Good, another more good news. Um, sales tax report. Our last report uh, we, we received uh, was for one million three hundred sixty-nine thousand five hundred twenty-one, which, uh, besides uh, the December month for Christmas shopping season, that is the highest sales tax ever recorded in the history of South End, Mississippi. So it just uh, it's it's a great indicator of you know where we are as a city. Uh, we are moving. Our economy is great. Uh, things are going well. Just to put that in perspective for you, uh, the same collection, uh, the money that we get in May is actually for March. Uh, so the uh, money we got in May of 2017 was 1,271,000. And so it's from that up to 1,369 for one month. So that puts us on pace to be um, about $350,000 a year higher than our budget uh, projection. So it's great news. It's, uh, like I said, the highest uh, ever in the history of the city other than a nine Christmas uh, collection month. Uh, there's two things that I need your help with tonight that did not get on the agenda. The reason they were not on the agenda is we're waiting on uh, third parties to give us the go ahead. The first one is we're waiting on MDOT uh, with a snow pedestrian project. Uh, we just received a letter today uh, giving us uh, the go ahead with approving uh, an engineering firm uh, for the CEI, so um, it is a recommendation to approve Civil Link, you know, to oversee that. But uh, we need a we need a vote tonight to uh, uh, to make that official for that approval. If someone would give me a motion for that, so, so for you to sign the contract, right? Uh, well, it's to approve them to designate them. Whitney, am I saying that right? It's to name them as the official engineering firm that's going to do the CE and I. Correct. They did the design. Now we're in the construction and overseeing the construction phase. So you have to um, select the firm. Okay. It's naturally usually the one that you've already got, but it's a formality we have to have and it has to have a vote behind it. So and then you'll be able to sign the letter. Okay. So we had two speak. So Alderman Flores made the motion. Alderman Payne, you second that, correct? All right. So we have a, a first and a second. Is there any, dis any other discussion about that? Your motion will be authorized to link You agree to that, all? I do. We'll let the minutes reflect that. Okay. Is there any other discussion about that? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. I'm sorry, Alderman Wheeler. You with us, Alderman Wheeler? Okay. Um, motion carries. Uh, the other thing I need this evening is the same thing there. We're, uh, we're waiting on approval from MDOT. Y'all are aware that um, in our budget plan and capital improvement plan uh, that was adopted in 2000, uh, in, in October of 17 for this budget year, we included in there that we would uh, bid for the uh, intersection modernization on Highway 51, all the intersections, um, uh, uh, Custer, um, Rasco, Brookhaven, and um, we did Mississippi Valley last year, and then uh, Maine in 51. All those intersections uh, we budgeted for to be uh, modernized, meaning that we would replace the old span wire uh, that's been up there for many years, add new mast arms, which would give pedestrian friendly options, as well as make the uh, signals uh, more conducive to uh, technology now, where they can communicate with each other. The old, old signal heads do not have that capability uh, the new ones are, do have the ability to communicate for you know, traffic congestion reasons, things like that. Uh, plus it dresses up. It dresses up the older part of our city. It's going to make it look much, much nicer, and it's a commitment to invest in original South Haven. Uh, so when we did that, uh, with 51 being a state highway, we had some hoops to go through with uh, MDOT uh, to make sure that they approve of that, and uh, they have uh, done that. So we just got notification today. That's why I was not on the agenda, just found out about that from them. 
so in hopes of not delaying the project, that's why I'm, I'm hoping that someone will make a motion tonight and, and authorize us to bid for that project. We're all going to bid for all, instead of doing the last two years, we've done one intersection at a time, and uh, this year we took that out of the budget line and put it in the uh, capital improvement plan to free up some money uh, in, our, uh, in our normal operating budget. So what we're going to do, instead of doing one at a time, we're going to bid all these together in hopes that we'll get a better price, you know, because it's more volume of business. So, so if someone will, uh, will help me out and, uh, and make a motion to authorize the bid for this intersection modernization project. Here, I'll make that motion that we authorize the bids. I'll second. We have a motion by Alderman Hoots, a second by Alderman Kelly. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. So, I'm sorry, Alderman Whalen. Any opposed say no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Okay, and that's all I have this evening for the mayor's report. Next on our agenda is our citizens' agenda. We have uh, one person that's signed up. Uh, Ms. Victor, would you please come forward? Good evening, and um, I have been living here what six seven months and my backyard is still the same way uh, no trees in the fence actually it's kind of getting bad it's eight years since that man put a fence up and promised to put trees in our backyards and there is no trees and I've asked three times uh, where's the water goes from that subdivision it's ruining our ditch which has become a creek right on Jacob Lane, and nobody's doing anything. Well, the land, and I did, when we uh, got the notice that you were going to speak about that issue again, I went back and did some research after our last discussion. Yeah. And what has happened since then, the developer that owns the property uh, does not want to plant the trees until the road is done for fear of damaging the road. So that's, what, that's why nothing has changed. Um, have you driven by there, sir? I have not. No. Well, I have the not. road is finished. The, the, the road, road was finished right, right away. Whitney, would you answer the, answer the, the question? The road is not finished. I, I live in that subdivision. You live in that subdivision? I live in that subdivision, yes, ma'am. You mean the road behind my house is not finished? finished? Yes, ma'am, it's not finished. It goes to the end of the very first section and all the way up to Rosebury. It is still on, it's a bottom layer. It's not complete yet. But, but the way the way I understand it, Whitney, please correct me if I'm wrong, the way I understand it, the developer has agreed to replant yes. trees. He has agreed to plant trees. But he is not going to do it. I might be bad by the, then. I mean, honestly. I'm well, we can't, and, and you know, this we can't force that, a, But you know what, though? This is what I said the first time. A citizen, when somebody's going to ask them to do something, or when you buy something in South Haven, I need to come to City Hall and check whatever it is. Because people have lied to us. The guy that sold us our house lied to us and told us that it belonged to the church. It didn't belong to the church because somebody's building. Aside of that, but who, who from the city lied to you? Nobody from the okay. city. What I'm saying is, I need to come to the city so I cannot take somebody's word for it because somebody tells you something. I mean, that was eight years ago. I mean, that was not yesterday. It was eight years ago when my husband had surgery. So I know that. But apart from that, I could see nothing is going to be done for years to come. So I want to leave it at that. But you know what? A gentleman that lives right down at the very corner where the water probably comes down into that ditch, he had to fix his own because the city told him that it's private property. Right, it is private property. It's ruining with all the water that's flowing in there from the lake and from all the other subdivision. That's it. I want to say something about the potholes. I'm not complaining about the potholes because they come in, in 16 years that I lived on Jacob Lane. They come and fix those potholes diligently at least every other month. Henry is a busy street and what they need to do, they need to cut a piece of that asphalt and resurface it. Just a piece because it breaks down no matter what you do. It, people drive back and forth. The street is narrow, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening. So we're wasting money just by coming over there every other month just to fix the butthole. They're doing it. I'm not complaining about that. But I think they need to do a better job than that. Because you know what? They're not going to resurface our streets. So therefore, they need to do that. 
They need to cut a piece, a section, and just resurface it and roll over it, and make it flat, because that's how it breaks down so far. So that's all I want to say. Well, no, and I like, it means a lot to me that I answer your questions on the streets. I agree with you. I have actually driven uh, on Henry Drive in the last 48 hours, so I'm familiar with what you're talking about. And um, so what we do, we analyze all the streets. We can put that on there. We can resurface that. I'll have to go back. I just wanted just one piece. Right, I understand. I, what I was going to tell you is eventually, I'm aware of it, is it is going to qualify for a full resurface in the next few years, but until then, uh, when you have multiple potholes like that, it's rough. You can cut the whole piece out, make it smooth. Our public works director, Bradley, is here. He's aware of that. We have other streets like that in the city that we do the same thing to. We will address that. I'll get that taken well, care that, of. You. I mean, that's all because I feel like in 16 years, nothing has been done about the filling the potholes. And, and they do a great job on that, except you cannot put asphalt on a hole and pat it down and expect to stay there because with the rain and driving over it and ruins it. Oh, no doubt. You're 100% so correct. I agree. Money, in my opinion, just keep coming back. If yeah. they do it, it will last well. Yeah, I agree with you. And we will address that. I do want the other two issues before we leave so we can make uh, make your time worthwhile for being here tonight. Uh, the other issue, just to clarify, I know it's not what you want to hear, and I, I apologize for that. I'm sorry I can't give you an answer that's more favorable. However, well, but what can't, we've already been told, and Whitney, correct me if I'm, the, the property owner has indicated that they will plant the trees when the road is done. And I'm sorry that it's not done now, but it, it, it is going to happen. Uh, the other thing about the drainage, um, that's been checked. With the first time you came here, we had our uh, engineering firm address the water flow. And Mr. Cordell, would you please stand and, and help us with that? Please address her question about the water, you know, her concern about the water. It's not. That's what I mean, because, you know, there is a spot there that comes right from. Yeah, and, and I can say that, I'm going to let him speak, but I can tell you that if it's on private property, there are limitations, state law prohibits us from... I understand doing that. I, I do, I really, really do understand that it is private property, but when the, when things have been given permission, permits to build and to run the water all over the places, it ruins the private Right, property. you feel like that the other developments surrounding it will put more water on you. Well, you know what, if you come and look, that the other subdivision, Roseberry and all, they don't have a retained uh, pond. So the water from Roseberry, there is a big hose, comes right into our pond. From, Goodman, uh, from Church Road, comes into our pond. So when it rains, sir, you should come over there. It's a lake. It becomes a lake all over the street. It runs down in there. And I know now with the builders, that subdivision over there, I don't know where their water goes. Yeah. And I've asked three times where the water goes because some of the water comes into the lower part, which is right back there. Yeah, and I, I just want, I want you to know that when you did bring that to our attention that we did, we did check into that and do some research. And that's what I'd like for Mr. Cordell to give us a summary of, please, sir. Uh, um, yes, we did look at the drainage. Uh, it did change. There is water going into the lake from other areas. That's the nature of the lake. They needed the drainage area for like the lake, uh, a wet lake. Uh, some of the area that she's talking about actually reduce water because it is going into the lake. So you have the tension in that lake, which is a wet pond. Uh, the other areas, um, you know, is private property. And, and I don't know. Yeah, but where is the water from Rose, the building where Miss uh, Whitney? Where does that water go? They don't ever retain it. We have a very huge lake in ours. We have a big lake in our subdivision. Well, good. So you mean to tell me that water doesn't run this way? All right, I'm not telling you where the water I'm just telling you there is a lake there. I'm pretty sure nobody here can tell you where the water runs out of that now. Which is, and therefore, why I was bringing them out there and leading. Yes, see, we've been told that everything has been looked at. Yes, ma'am. We've been the drainage area. Drainage area of it. Now, I'm bringing you them out. Listen, I'm not going to bring this up again because nothing is going to be done anyway, so that's all there is to it. Okay, we're just, just trying to give you, you know, answer the question and give you uh, the information that you asked for, well, that's all. Uh, you know what, uh, uh, Batman, uh, those houses on that part of Jacob Lane, they were
bitch, now it's not a bitch anymore. So, you know what? Water comes from somewhere, right? And it's not the fact that the, the builders, whoever gets permits, where, now they might have a lake. I haven't seen it because I've driven back there. But Roseberry doesn't have a lake. Uh, Savannah uh, Parkway doesn't have a lake. Well, we'll um, Mr. Cordell, as he mentioned, will definitely uh, meet with you and give you all the information that uh, his engineers uh, discovered when they did the uh, did the inspection and the analysis. But thank you for coming. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak? Please come forward and state your name. My name is Alan Schaefer, and I'm an ophthalmologist. And for 10 years, I've used a dumpster behind my building. And um, in our last month, we've been denied access to our dumpster behind our building from our neighbor. And code enforcement has told us that we have to remove the container. We placed the dumpster on the other side of our building, between our building and uh, Goodman Road, where it was hidden from view from Goodman Road. And we were told we had to remove the container after the same neighbor complained. What's your, what's your address? 726 Goodman Road East. What's that close to? Okay. Um, and we were told against what it was against coal against code where we put our container and we were told to remove the container from there and we were further told that there's no place on our property that we can put a container as every place on our property is against code um, and we're requesting a variance uh, to the code to allow us to place a trash container uh, where we had last had it located You were told that you couldn't have a, a trash container? Yeah. I, that doesn't make, I, I'm not aware of anything like that, but we'll, we'll check into that and find out. If, uh, we can uh, get our code enforcement officers. He's aware. Officer's aware and Whitney. Whitney, what's, what's the issue? Let me kind of just go back a little bit. I think Alderman Payne spoke to him as well. Um, code enforcement, obviously, the neighbor came in complaining about parking in her area and we explained to her that there was nothing we could do you know in terms of parking between the two she came in and asked if she could put a fence up along her property line where well, her property does an L and essentially his uh, DeSoto I care is it DeSoto yes. I care is um, kind of in the little niche of the L shape so it was once a rectangle that she wrapped and he bought this lot she wanted to come and put a fence up because she said that she was tired of them putting their dumpster on her property I said well you can put a fence around your property that's fine just make sure it's on your property, pull a fence permit, go across the street, or go across the hall. Well, I believe when she did that, um, I'm not sure, but I think the dumpster may have been located on her property at, at that point. So they were they were asked to, to get it off her property by her. When it went up to the front, it became a cone violation because you can't put a commercial dumpster you know, in the front of the building. It has to be screened by masonry materials on three sides. Uh, it has to be located in the rear. Um, He's very tight on space. The only thing I can come up with, and I spoke to Alderman Payne about this at one point, is instead of maybe getting a commercial dumpster, just get some of the like the city roll-offs that you can actually put around the back, because that's about the only thing that can fit on the So property. the issue is there's no space in the rear? Yeah, they're very the tight. Habit? Yes, they're very tight on okay. it, and I think um, she's not allowing them to utilize the property. Apparently, they once had a, a handshake agreement. Uh, we looked up to see if there was an actual legal document and that we couldn't find an easement where they were granted accessibility to the back and for whatever reason she got to a point where she didn't want to work with them anymore so she just cut off that access and at that point it became a civil issue and there's not a whole lot we could do except address you know the violation she was trying to put up gates on the access points we told her she couldn't do that she was trying to put chains across her section of the parking lot. I can't do that. Um, but we also can't help you regulate if his clients come over there and park there. That's going to be between the two of you. Uh, and it's kind of become a civil issue, and there's really nothing more that we can do at that standpoint. I think what he's asking now is for a variance to allow the commercial dumpster to go up front um, along the Goodman Road area. He does have a hardship, but I think the problem you're going to run into now is you have to screen it appropriately. Um, and I don't know where you do that on that front. Um, was it is it a possibility that you could move in the front and put evergreens around it maybe or something? There's a, they're already there. They're, they're, they yeah. visible. So I mean, it could be hidden. It's if, hidden. If you want to grant the hardship, we just can't. I mean, commercial dumpsters are supposed to be screened by mason yeah. by bricks. I right. took photos um, for you to see where it's where it sits on the property, where it was sitting on the property. Okay. And it's, was it sitting on your property or was yeah. it sitting this on her property? Well, she's she's saying it's on front. hers. Yeah, this is in the front. Okay. 
Okay. And they the also front. told us that this is a large dumpster, that they can even bring us a smaller size that we can even shed less. Well, that sound, this sounds like an issue that could be resolved. I, I, I was not aware of it, this. I didn't know anything about this. I appreciate you bringing it to my attention. But um, no, what the issue is with cover horses, is you, like Whitney said, you can't have it in front or unshielded because obviously that becomes somewhat of an eyesore and, and the other, your other property owners around you will not like that, I can assure you. Um, but if there's a way to, to uh, downsize it or have it shielded in some way, I think that could be something that would make sense to you know, we have to go through a variance process, yeah. and they would have to grant a variance on the location. And if if we were talking about just doing landscaping around it, it would have to be a variance on the materials to screen it. Do you, Do you need a dumpster? Yes. Yeah. I mean, we a surgery we, center and a physician's practice, so we need a dumpster. It's a real, I, I've talked to Dr. Schaefer a couple of times, it, it's a really unique situation. and. Um, as far as where he had the dumpster before, I think there's a, a landowner squabble between him and the neighbor who he had bought the property from. Uh, they just need a variance of somewhere that they can put their dumpster. And it's, uh, I think as long as it's, you know, we, uh, what is it that you put around it? The masonry material, it has to be material to match the building. Um, as, as long as we put something around it, I, I think it's a great compromise, you know, for you guys. Uh, I have no problem with it at all. So then how about, can we just start the variance process? And yeah, I mean, they just kind of file a variance that would go in front of the Board of Adjustments. Um, I think you would definitely have a hardship on the location just because it's an extremely tight site. I think it would be hard pressed to get the materials changed up for right. landscaping because it is commercial. Um, but yeah, they can file the variance and go to the Board of Adjustment. I mean, I would be an advocate to the Board of uh, making a common sense decision. I mean, I, obviously the reason if they're required in the back is for it not to be unsightly in front of the building. With it being garbage, so for, if, but if there's not a, a place to put it in the back, and uh, and your neighbor is not cooperating with you from what you did in the past, I think it makes sense, and I certainly uh, could be an advocate to this board to to give a variance at some time. Okay. You know, but I, we need to go through the process so we can get all the facts, like see what it's going to look like, you know, what the structure you're proposing to put around it, or evergreens or whatever. Um, I mean, you, you really can't see it from Goodman at all. The only time you can see it is just in our parking lot. Yeah, I think yeah. the problem you're going to have just saying that you can't see it and it's with the landscaping is then you start a domino effect with everybody who doesn't want to do their appropriate screening around it. So it's going to have to be some brick material. They were, and like I said, it's required on three sides, a, put, a foot above the, um, the actual dumpster uh, and then gate enclosure on it. Um, and we do that on every commercial property. So I think the hardship's there for the location, mm -hmm. but I, I would be hard pressed to get the materials changed up. And I think you're going to have a lot of other people saying, well, they get to hide it behind bushes. Why can't we? And bushes go away. So... They want a more permanent location and a permanent structure to screen it. I, I agree. I yeah. agree. Can we do something to give them permission to do it while they're in this process? Well, I think right now what we want to do is, it, did you get issued a ticket by code no. enforcement? No? No. Um, okay, if there's no ticket there, we won't have to put out, we won't have to remand the ticket. We'll just ask the officer that's been involved, I believe that's Officer Drayton, yeah, um, Drayton. to just hold tight and let them go through a process that's with the next it. thing I was going to ask. Yeah, we uh, can do that. As long as they start the process, mm -hmm. let's have code enforcement, you know, let them go And the then process. if you go online, it's the variance application, and it's got some hardships that you have to just define and describe where you have the hardship. And like I said, I think you can back the hardship. It's a very tight site. Um, obviously, yeah, you're, you're, you're do it. You, you have? have? Okay. Well, we'll remain the ticket at this point in time um, or put a hold on it until we know that the process has been completed. But, I mean, we can definitely work with them. It's just, um, you know, it was out of the hands of a – of an administrative decision and like I said a lot of it's become a, a civil case between the two property owners the other property owners been in several times and we've um, basically told her she can't you know block parking and things like that so can we, that, that's going to be another issue and see so we can't control the parking whatsoever well you. no I mean if, if she blocks us from parking on the side of our building you know, I, I can't practice. she can block you parking on her property um, wherever her property lines are, she can block. Now, she was asking about the ingress egress that you both shared on Formbridge it's shared in that sense that both of you are allowed to use it. She can't block that. Okay. Um, but that's, the what parking, that's what I'm talking about. Cause yeah, no, she can't block the drive from Goodman Road. She cannot do that. Uh, she can block her other <coughs> drive that's solely on her property, but not the one that, you're accept, you, that you access from. Um, she, she's been informed she cannot do that. Um, but she can, on her own property, if she chooses to, start towing vehicles. She's um, been up yeah, and because because we wouldn't, she was almost on tire spikes, so we've just we've calmed her down. Um, but 
Uh, yeah, we can't control the parking. It's not a shared parking design. It's site by site because uh, I looked at that trying to determine if it was something we could work with and if they were just individually designed with their own parking. So, I mean, we can't control where they park and what she does with it. Well, that, that we have one further issue then because we have our employees parking off site and they're having to walk along Goodman. So it might be a nice thing to have a sidewalk along Goodman. So be well, now that's MDOT, so you don't have to speak to MDOT about that one. Yeah, that's going to be a state issue right there. So we don't actually control the sidewalks on MDOT, but you can always pitch it to them. Uh, but if you will, tomorrow, will you go ahead and start the variance application? Yes, and then Whitney, would you um, bring me up to speed on all the details of what has transpired to this point, and then we'll uh, mm -hmm. we'll look at uh, or evaluate and what the temporary due, solution is. Yeah, and normally the grants are due the first week of the month, but I haven't finished the paperwork to get the reports out for the June 4th hearing, so if you want to file for this month, we want to get going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry you've had trouble. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on the citizens agenda? My name is Ben Woodson. I live at 7605 Davis Parkway. The drain runs through my yard. And in the back, it's never been cleaned. And grass growing up in there. So some rock would be nice if we get that. And the drain itself needs to be cleaned out. So those big tanks run through my yard and my neighbor's yard. So mosquitoes. Big. We need somebody to spray at least once or twice a year because that water sets in the back. Okay. Are you talking about the drain that goes out right next to Snappy Windshield? Yeah. Right there? Okay. It's Davis Parkway. Yes, sir. 7605 and 7613 South Davis Highway, Parkway. And the drain right, right through my yard. They fixed that stop. They stopped that leak. You know, because that, that big pipe in the hole in, in there had a hole in it. They fixed that. So they put the sign down. Who like fixed that. it, sir? So what? Who I, fixed it? A, a link. Okay. It's a link. It's a link. Yeah. Christy, would you write down the address of 7605 Davis Parkway? 7613 and 7605. Okay. They run right through our yard. We're the last drain in, on the street. Okay. And all that water come down there, come right through my yard. And, I, and, and when they, before they put the sign down, I got water in my garage for the first time. Well, I'm sorry that happened to you. We'll investigate it and see what Civil Link has checked out, see what the solution is. We'll, we'll definitely do that. Okay, and I had a drain, I got a, a drain on my, on my house. And it, I didn't know it was there. I guess the people, somebody put it there before I moved there 12 years ago. Anyway, they cut it, you know, so I want that replaced. You know, so they, if the water you come on top of my house, going back to the back too. Right. Well, I mean, what, that's something I want to talk to Civil Link about. I mean, we, we can't do work on private property, but if it's a public drainage system, that's something we can't do. But help the, with. the property behind where all the water sets, that's private property, right? It's a private property. I don't know who owns it. Yes, sir. It is private It is private property. But that water been sitting out there drain. I've never seen anybody clean it. They yeah. cut the tree down. You guys cut the tree down last year. But the tree is growing back now. You know, it's small, but it's growing back. It's in the drain itself. It's drain public property or snappy property? So, so what? It's drain public property. I think, yeah. actually, I think the drain goes on snappy property. Now, I don't know whose property it is, but it's for sale sign. That's, it never sold it yet. I'm, but, I, I'm not. But the water runs from, from, from Custard. The drain may come out next to it. I, the I'm water runs from Custard all the way sure. down to... Yeah. Dorchester. I don't know where it's going from there. Yeah, best way to handle it is let us let me get the details of Civil Lane, see what their uh, uh, recent inspection showed, and then we need to go out and reinspect it. We'll do that. Anything that's on public property, we can we can correct that for you. Okay. But, I, but I'm just making it clear. I don't want to mislead you. If it's on private property, it's not something we'd be able to do. About the drain. Right. Whatever. But we'll know after we look at their analysis. We'll know what's public and what's well, private. I'm talking about the drain. When the water comes through our yard. Mm -hmm. Water sits in the back. That's I think it's private property. Yeah, and it may we may be limited on what we can do on the if it's on private property we would be limited. But it's best. I don't want to speak without having the details. Again, I'm not aware of this at all. So um, I'll uh, check with Civil and get updated tomorrow, and then we'll be in touch with you to let you know when somebody's coming back out there. We can answer all the details. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming forward. Okay. Does anyone else would like to speak on the citizens' agenda? Okay, next on our agenda is our personnel docket. Ms. 
Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the personnel documents presented on this date. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, second by Alderman Payne. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hoots? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Next on our agenda is our city attorney's legal update. Step two, contracts real quick. Uh, the first contract is with uh, Tredevi Environmental Health Services, LLC. This will allow for uh, public works to utilize a dumpster for um, uh, waste or toxic or hazardous household hazardous waste at a public works department for a year um, to assist the citizens within the city to, uh, of collecting that waste. Um, we had a couple of revisions to the contract. Uh, Tredevi has agreed to those revisions, so tonight is the authorization for Bradley Wallace to sign this agreement with Tredevi. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Kelly. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Ayes have a motion carried. Uh, second is an amendment with uh, Tyler uh, Technologies. This is our um, contract with one of our IP vendors. Um, they have switched their end user from uh, uh, Adobe to Doc Origin. And so we get to acknowledge that switch through this amendment. Um, some of the terms could be changed as a, as a, a document or an end user agreement that's just uniform um, throughout the country. But we did get the uh, Tyler, Tyler to add contra or contractual language in here about uh, the city being a um, public entity and not waiving its rights to agree to certain uh, requirements within the contract amendment. So there's not even authorization for Chris Shelton to sign this Tyler uh, amendment um, or Tyler contract amendment um, for the end user license agreement. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, second by Alderman Payne. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it, motion carries. Next on the agenda is our claims docket. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the claims docket in the amount of $1,527,192.46, including demand checks. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Flores. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hoots? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Yes. Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. All right, next on the agenda is to um, determine the need for executive session. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Gallagher, second by Alderman Kelly. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. The need this evening is to discuss claims of litigation against the city, leasing of city property, and economic development. Is there a motion to declare executive session? So moved. Sorry. We got a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Brooks. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. The mayor and board will now enter executive session. 